Good morning! My name is Karen Kong and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Ottawa, Canada and welcome to my This or That Thursday. So every week I try to post two cards in my Facebook group for my crafting community to vote on for me to make one of them live on Thursday mornings. So um, if you vote or if you comment on my video, um, you may win something uh, in the mail, something happy uh, to come your way. So um, this is the time of year, actually, that Stampin' Up! does uh, does annual recognition of um, demonstrators' achievements in the past year for um, team building, um, sales, and team leadership. And I want to take the opportunity to thank all of you who have joined in um, for one of my classes or one of my events and uh, ordered through me by having my annual second annual customer appreciation night so that's on january 28th and i hope that you'll join in because it's completely free if you've ordered through me or attended one of my classes and just register so that i can prepare all the goodies and have everything um, ready uh, for the event so make sure you uh, make sure you register um, the link is uh, posted um, in my group good morning tara Nice to see you're watching too. Um, yes, so uh, so for anybody who has joined in with me, ordered through me, um, come to one of my classes, um, I would love to show my appreciation um, by having you join me for a customer appreciation night in January. Hi, Sandra. So this week's card was a um, unanimous vote for the penguin. So that is what we're making today. And I'm happy I can also show you how to use your scraps up from your DSP, your designer series paper, because if you're like me, I don't throw that stuff out. I just can't throw out pretty paper. Um, so this is a great way to use up all your strips of scrap. Um, okay, so just give me a second and I'm gonna turn my, uh, my camera around. Just close your eyes, okay? Just a sec. Just make sure it's landscape. All right, so let me just smooth zoom in a little bit. Okay. All righty, and I have to set up my machine. I forgot that I wanted to set up my uh, my Facebook group on my desktop so that I can see all your comments. Um, all right. Okay. I think I'm ready to go. Oh, you know, I think my camera, my phone camera must use a different camera from, for videos than I do, than it does for my, uh, for taking pictures because I always set up my camera every week by just, um, setting it in camera mode and then, um, putting it in the phone mount and then um, adjusting the location of my my mat from there but um, I think it's wrong because like this is clearly too far over so I'm just gonna move it over so that I can I can uh, keep an eye on where I'm putting my hands and my displaying what I'm doing because I know that if I go off the screen it won't uh, you won't be able to see anything so let me just I'm just adjusting now sorry Okay, so there is some retired stuff here because I know that some of you also um, loved the paper from last year's celebration for the penguin set. It's the um, Playful Penguins. Let me just show you. Yes. Uh, sorry, it's Penguin Playmates. That's the DSP. Okay, so that's the DSP and you can see that I have lots of it left. Um, so I have lots of stra uh, scraps lying around and I thought it'd be a great way to use it up because so um, here we go. All right, so I've got some of my pieces ready. Um, so this card has a layer here that I embossed in the wintry 3D embossing folder. It's the snowflake one. And, um, and then I put a mat on top of that where I placed um, 
my stamped image because I didn't want to stamp on the white. Uh, I thought it looked better here on the bottom of the um, of the uh, I don't know what you want to call that it's that little mat on top that I made with these um, s scraps. Okay, so let me see. I have my card base ready. I had just happened to have a white already cut out, but I do need a piece that goes on top, the mat that I need to emboss, and then I need all these layers. So this one, I think I have, um, this one is not quite, I have to, not quite the right size. I think it's a little bit long, so I'll cut that one. So let me just double check that. Whoops. So this is four inches. I need that to be four inches. So let me get my paper trimmer. For those of you who don't have the paper trimmer, this is one of the most essential tools um, you'll need. One of the most basic and essential tools that you'll need for crafting. Um, it measures and it cuts and it scores your paper all on the same device. So here I'm just going to measure to four inches and I cut it. And I have to make sure to use the right blade. This is the, the uh, cutting blade, the dark one. The other one's used for scoring. Okay, and then um, I need a piece that is white that lies behind here. I use just regular white. Um, I don't use the thick white. Uh, Sandra's asking if I use thick white for the card base. There are lots of demonstrators who do use thick weight. Uh, sorry, thick uh, basic white, but um, it's, it's personal preference. If I know there's going to be a lot of layers on my card, it's already going to feel heavy enough. Um, if I was making just a simple card with just um, stamping, I would probably lean towards more using the thick basic white because then you get a little bit more weight in your card. I don't want the card to feel flimsy, but when you're adding layers, it doesn't feel flimsy at all. So I just stick to the regular white. Basic white, I usually save for um, coloring with like blends markers because they absorb better um, and it's better for blending with if, uh, because there's more paper to absorb it and, and move around the ink, if that makes sense. So yes, I save my thick basic white for um, coloring. Okay, so there is a white piece behind here which I adhered all my scraps to and it's I have a piece left over which is also almost the right um, size but I have to trim it down so I'm pretty sure this is three by three. So anybody who's joining in for the first time don't worry about writing down all the measurements because I will put them in the description of the video later once it's posted um, so you can just uh, sit back and watch. Okay, so that's three by three. Okay, and I need this white piece, um, the white matting piece. Let me just try and find a piece of white cardstock. Okay, so this is a regular, the card base is just a half a piece of eight and a half by 11 uh, paper. Okay, so I just cut it in half and I at uh, five and a half inches and I score at four and a quarter. So to mat something with just a quarter of an inch around, it's four by five and a quarter that I need. So this is the other half. Um, so this is five and a half already. So I'm going to cut four and a four by five and a quarter. So this is four inches and then five and a quarter on this side. Sandra's asking me a question. She's asking, have you compared the difference um, if you when you dry emboss the thick versus basic white? Um, you know what? I don't think I've ever embossed, dry embossed with the basic, thick basic white. I don't know if I've ever tried that. I'm not sure I would. Um, I would hazard a guess that if uh, if you emboss on a thinner piece of paper it might stand out more. I, but that's just a guess. I, I don't know. I really don't know if the design would look, how it would look different um, if I embossed on thick versus the regular. Um, okay, so I think I can go ahead with uh, using my cut and emboss machine to em dry emboss this. And I also want to cut out this tiny circle that I put behind my penguin. Okay, so I have a piece of scrap here. 
Um, oh, I didn't tell you which products I used. So I use Heartfelt Wishes, which is a retired set, but you can use any um, sentiment that fits in this spot. Um, there's my Wintry 3D, the penguin place for uh, stamping my penguin face and his uh, accessories. And then I use the stylish shapes dies to cut out this circle. So I'm just going to grab that circle for die cutting. Yeah, I should try the, uh, definitely try the thick white. I, I definitely recommend the thick white for coloring. It really, um, it really makes a difference if you're trying to add a lot of shading. I, um, I have compared that coloring on regular white versus thick white, and there definitely is a difference. Um, I do like coloring on the thick one better. Okay, so let me move this out of the way for my machine. This is my matting layer. Okay, so the, the uh, I have to get my Wintry 3D folder out. A little bit trickier to uh, dry emboss with um, the, uh, the smaller um, folder. Okay, so obviously this doesn't fit um, all the way in. So I think what I did last time is um, I think I embossed like this way and then like this way to and, and because it's behind the um, it's behind a matted uh, uh, an image on top um, it hides like where the seam is so it's not really obvious plus it's white so it's not as easy to see so it works out well okay let's just let me get my moss machine so I thought I had uh, I have, I thought I hurt my elbow and my shoulder from repetitive strain from putting together my cards, which I thought was really ridiculous. But now, and it just, and I thought it would go away in just a few days because it was just a, a light muscle ache or something, but really it got more painful. And um, I think I actually did it when I was lifting pumpkins or something. When I bought my pumpkins for this weekend, this past weekend for Halloween, I think I must have pulled something when I lifted those pumpkins into the cart and in the, then into the car and then carried them to the house. I don't know, but it was definitely painful. Nothing, this getting old business sucks, man. <laughs> um, okay. Let's see. So I'm going to try this way. And then I will turn it around and emboss the other side. Oops. So with this is a 3D embossing folder, and my uh, my base uh, what do you call it plate uh, number one has all these instructions on which plates you need when you're embossing or cutting. And I forgot this one. So but this one tells me I only need the plate number four on top. Let me get that. Okay. So. Yeah, I hope that my elbow and my shoulder will be all better by next week. Um, I'm trying not to uh, aggravate it by doing any exercising that um, that makes it worse. But that's okay. I don't expect to finish all the crafting projects at on stage in the allotted amount of time because I'm pretty sure they're going to go pretty fast. <laughs> I fully expect that I will have to finish my projects when I come home. Um, okay, so there's half of it, if you can see, and I'm just going to slide the other half in, and it doesn't have to exactly match. Like I said, it's going to be hidden behind the uh, the layer on top. So there's going to definitely be a seam. Um, but uh, we won't see too much of it. I'm just going to try not to overlap at least. Okay, so. Hmm. See, the tricky part now is that it doesn't quite fit. It's a little bit long, so I have to tuck it in just a little bit further. All right, I just have enough room. Oh, actually I had a little bit more room than that. It's good, all good. There 
There we go. Okay, so there is a little bit of a seam, but like I said, we'll make sure that that is hiding behind the layer on top. All right, so I'm done with the uh, embossing folder. I need to die cut my circle that sits behind my penguin. Okay. I can't believe the beautiful weather we've been having. Like, we're supposed to hit like 20 degrees later this week, I think. It's like unheard of in November here. Ridiculous. I'm not complaining. Trust me, I'm not complaining. I love this this warm weather. It's beautiful. All right. Okay, so let's see now. Just so I don't lose my stuff, I'm going to adhere my card base and my um, my mat. Okay, so if you saw, I'm actually I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to use what's called the debossed side. So the side where um, that's not bumpy. The bumpy side is the embossed side where it, it r is raised up. But I'm going to use the side that's not bumpy. I'm, it's just personal preference. And um, many of the uh, there's. Uh, Many of the designs in the, the embossing folders, you can turn over and they look just as beautiful on the other side. So that's what I'm going to do for this one. Um, okay, so let me just double check. The seam is right across here. So I'm going to put it uh, on the upper half of this image so that once I put uh, the penguin image on top, it won't be very visible. So let me just get my glue out. And we'll glue it on. Okay, I think I have been making Christmas cards since July. I don't think I've made that many that are not Christmas cards. It's crazy. I hope I haven't even counted how many Christmas cards I've made yet, and but I hope that uh, I will ha end up with enough to send everybody I want a Christmas card. Sorry, I am just aligning it so that it's even on all sides. Okay, I'm pressing it down. Okay, because it's a little bit bumpier, I just want to make sure that the glue is adhering to uh, all the edges. All right, so that's easy enough. We'll put that away. All right, so now um, let's do some stamping. So. Uh, happiest holidays. You know what? I'm gonna wait till I finish this piece here. Um, yeah, let's start with that. Okay, so I have all my scraps. Here's my, this is the piece that I adhered everything to, okay? And I need scraps. So I have all these scraps that I had from previous projects that I have left over and I'm just gonna take them and I'm gonna cut strips on an angle because you can see none of these are straight. Okay, I'm not going to measure them. I know, this is like, this is like um, an anti, my, my uh, I don't know what you want to call it. It's just a project that does not require uh, preciseness um, for measuring these pieces, which is against my nature, I think. But it's kind of freeing in some one one sense. Okay, so um, I'm going to get two of each design. I think that'll be enough. So all I'm going to do is take my strip and I'm just going to put it in on an angle and I'm going to cut pieces one uh, so that one end is skinnier than the other. So here we go. Okay, there's one. I think I want to make this one a little bit skinnier. I don't want them to be hugely different from each other, but you know, really, it's a matter of pre personal preference, I think. I know, Sandra, I'm not measuring, not even trying to line things up and measure. Incredible. Um, 
yeah, so even though they're not measured, um, it will depend on how you want your final look. It will depend on personal preference. You can play around with this um, as to how thick you want them. It will give you a different look, obviously, if you cut them thicker. Um, okay, so this one's a little bit straight. I'm just going to make it a little bit more crooked. So there's more of a difference in the bottom and the top. Okay, so that one. That's two designs. Here's another design. So you can choose as many different designs as you want for your background. You might only choose two different designs. It'll give you a different look than if you choose, you know, several different patterns. It'll make it look less busy if you use only two. Um, again, just, you know, play with it. Play with the scraps that you have and see what you get. Okay, so there's uh, the green ones. I need some of these stripey ones. I think I need one more of my purpley one. Let's see. Oh, and the polka dot. So let's cut this one. So your oh, one thing I should mention is that the strips have to be at least as wide as your the piece of paper that you're adhering them to um, for coverage. So I think some of these might actually be exactly as wide as the uh, piece that I'm adhering to. But let's see. Okay, so this one, cut this one like this. Okay, I think that's all I need. Oops. All right, so let's start arranging our pieces. Let me get out my uh, silicone mat because if I get any pieces of glue on the back or overhanging the edge of my piece, it's okay. It won't make my whole um, project stick to the paper. This one will just peel right off and the glue will just peel right off when it's dried on the silicone mat. Okay, so I'm just going to take my pieces and start arranging them. Um, and they should overhang. They can overhang the edges. Um, I'm just going to line up the one edge because I don't want to cut off. I don't want to have to cut off a sliver. I, eventually, after you've put everything down, you're going to trim off all the excess so that you have the original shape left behind. It's really easy. So I just don't want to have to trim off slivers because those are hard. But uh, tiny pieces off the side won't be too bad. So um, I am going to leave a very slight gap. You could um, do it so that uh, there's no gap if you wanted to. I'm just going to lay it out because I want to know approximately where everything is going to go and in what order because I don't want two of the same piece lying next to, each, next to each other. So this one actually fits. Ooh, it's a little bit short. I may have to cut another one. Okay, this one's longer. Okay, that one. Uh, let's take a blue one. Okay, so it's okay to let them overhang. Um, green, I don't think I've used a green one. I'll go back to this. And this. So tell me, does everybody keep their scraps like me? Make, or do you are you more likely to get rid of these little skinny pieces because now you have a way to use them okay this one's too short I'm going to use uh, let's see this one this one's wide enough um, a little bit better like this no this. I'm just trying to see if this is going to be wide enough. I might have to cut another piece. 
because it's not quite wide enough, I think. Okay, well, I, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and start sticking some of these down, and then we'll see from there. All right. I'm going to need my uh, tweezers for this. It helps me place things without having to actually commit to where it's... Uh, Oh, you know what? I think I prefer to just put it straight on the card base. Then I don't have to try and line up the piece of paper with the glue on the back and not see where it's going. Okay, so I just kind of put glue there where it's supposed to go. That's why lining it up ahead of time kind of gives you an idea of what shape you're going to put your glue in. So I'm just going to line up the left edge here so I don't have to trim that piece. Okay, all right, so this one, let's put a little bit of glue down. And, I'm, and for me, I'm leaving a little gap here, just a tiny sliver. Okay. I'm going to move this one and get that one on. So yeah, I have tons of scraps. Like all, of, I keep all the scraps inside the original packaging. Sometimes I have to take a little envelope to put them in if they're really small. But I don't keep really, really small pieces. But I do keep ones that I think will be useful for um, a tag or a border. And now they're useful for this scrappy strip technique. Okay, let's take this one off. We'll do this one next. I should do like a whole pile of cards with scrappy strips. I use up all those little tiny pieces in my packaging. That way I wouldn't have to feel guilty about hanging on to them for so long and not doing anything with them. Oh, I moved it over too much. I hope I'm not committed. This, the good part with glue is that it dries slower and you're not instantly stuck. All right, next piece. So this is really easy. It's really like a no-brainer. Um, doesn't require measuring and you just kind of put it together and then trim it and it looks fantastic so it's not meant to be tedious so but it's just if it looks tedious maybe it's just me because I like to line things up but you know certainly people don't have to don't have to be super strict about lining everything up it's all personal preference And this, uh, this method is pretty forgiving. See, I moved that strip down so that I could use the wider edge because I'm wondering if I can cover the entire last bit with this blue piece somehow. And I'm not sure that it will fit. See, I have a, a little bit of white showing there. This is the anal part of me coming out because I don't like it not to be even. Um, I wonder if I have another strip. Let me just see. I had pre-chosen my strips. Let me see if I have another piece left over here that I can cut. I think I do. Here, I have another piece. Okay, so... Yeah, I don't want that tiny little sliver down here. I want it to be filled in. So I'm going to cut one more sliver. Um, I'm just going to do it off to the side here so I don't have to move my project. So 
so that should be perfect, right? I'll have to uh, trim the edge of this one after. All right, so let's glue that on. That's super long, but whatever. Okay. There we go. Easy peasy. Oh, Sandra. Yeah, whatever those things are. I'm sure that they'll be going like super fast putting those things together, those projects. Like, I don't know. Like I said, I am the slowest one. And when I attend other classes, like other demonstrators classes, I am always having to finish mine after the class is done because I'm just way too slow. Okay, so hopefully that is, you know what, I'm going to give it a few seconds to dry before I trim it. Okay, so that's all I have to do for that for now. I'm going to let it dry. Um, and maybe we should just do the stamping, uh, get my uh, penguin ready. So, um, oh, I forgot to get my penguin punch out. Let me get that out too. Because we're going to need to punch out the penguin. Sorry, just bonked the uh, camera. All right, so here's my penguin punch. Let's unlock it. I have a piece of black ready here. And I'll have to get a white too. I'm going to take this piece of black and I'm going to turn it over so I can see where I'm punching. And I'm going to punch out my penguin body. And I will get a piece of white to punch out his torso. Okay. All right, there's his torso. Easy peasy. Sorry, I don't know why I'm saying that so often. I'm hanging around with kids too much. Um, okay, so maybe what I'll do is I'm going to stamp it first. I'm going to stamp his eyeballs and his, uh, because if it, um, if I don't like the way it looks, then I can change it without having to repunch the, uh, the back. So I like using my Stamparatus. You could easily put this, you know, put this on a uh, block, but, um, I do like using my Stamparatus because sometimes the eyeballs... Uh, whatever it is I'm stamping doesn't come out as dark as I would like and uh, this Stamparatus gives me a chance to stamp again in the exact same spot and darken those up. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so let's get out Penguin Place. And I need eyeballs for this guy. And I'm going to need a beak later. I'll do the beak after because I need it to be in yellow. So let me let me just line this up and use a magnet to hold it okay i'm going to put the eyeballs where i want them to be okay that looks straight all right whoops see that's i don't know why it always sticks to my fingernails when i try to let go but it'll be fine there we go And then I'm going to use the plate to pick it up. And where's my block? Okay. Here's my memento block. I'm just going to ink it up. There's the eyeballs. Oh, that turned out really well. Sometimes when I've done it, um, it doesn't come out. It comes out more like a gray or something for whatever reason. So uh, I like to be able to stamp it again and get them really black. Okay, I'm just going to wipe wipe off my ink. That's just a chamois with water on it. It comes out comes off with water. And then I'm going to get his little beak out. And put the beak on his face. So, try to center this. Whoops. Okay. Let go of my finger. All right. Sorry. 
Okay, so I need Mango Melody. That's the color I use for his beak. Cheerfully yellow. So see, that is fine, but uh, I would like it to be a darker yellow. So I'm going to ink it up again and stamp it again. That looks pretty good, but I think I want to do it one more time. Okay, that looks really good. I like that. All right, so let me just clean off the fleet and my stamp. Okay, let me put this tiny beak away before I lose it. Where did I put the stamp set? Um, funny, that's half the battle of, of uh, stamping, is trying to figure out where you put stuff that is literally right in front of you and you cannot see it. Um, what did I do with the stamp set? That's not it. I, uh, I must be blind. I don't know what I did with it. Okay. Um, hmm. That's really strange. Oh, it fell off the table. That's why. All right, here we go. Okay, because the next thing I need are a scarf and a hat. Where did the hat go? Okay, so here's a scarf and a hat. Let me move the little cute little guy. And I'm going to get a piece of scrap white to stamp on. Actually, I think there's enough on this one. I'll use up this piece. Okay, so... Anchor it down with the magnets. And I will stamp them in blue. Let me see. I think that's enough. Plenty of room. All right. So I'm using the same blue that's found in the DSP, so it exactly matches. This is a retired color. It mist, it's called Misty Moonlight. Oops. And that is why we lined things up. So I knew I had put it in the corner there, and now I know it will line up again. Okay. Yeah, so that's the beauty of using Stampin' Up! colors and inks and papers. Everything coordinates beautifully, so you're never having to search for the right color. Because I have spent, I don't know how many, you know, hours when I'm trying to create cards, matching up colors. And that was a real big challenge when I used... Um, Pattern paper that was not from the Stampin' Up! family. I was uh, that was pre Stampin' Up! days, and I'm telling you, I would spend like so much of my time trying to match up, you know, different color families just with each other, and then also trying to find the right ink color to to stamp in as well. And uh, that part of it is like a no brainer with Stampin' Up! products. I I really really like that. I don't have to think about that. Um, cause you just choose. This is, this is the blue that came in the DSP and that's the one I will stamp in. Uh, oh, Sandra is saying, did you know that the hat and the scarf and the snowman, oh yes, that's right. So the hat and the scarf and the snowman magic set works for the penguin. Oh yeah, I guess I should use that instead. Hat and scarf stamps. Right. Yes. Okay. So yes, you have to use the coordinating stamp with the dies to get them. But it is nice that uh, some of these like little elements do um, easily transfer over to other st sets. I think they. I'm pretty sure they must plan it that way um, because I know the hippo stuff. There are accessories on the hippo that will also work with the penguin or another set, um, and I have done that. So. But I thought I'd just stick to one set for today. And I do like how the hat fits and looks. So now is just, this is just but it's fussy cutting. There's no dies for this. And um, that's okay. I'm just going to snip off this excess so I don't have to drag it around. Okay. So when you're fussy cutting, you need a really short um, scissors, craft scissors. And these are super, super sharp. Oh, hi, Maureen. Thanks for joining us. 
Um, yeah, super, super sharp. I am not the best cuss fussy cutter. Um, I've seen like some people who, some people really enjoy fussy cutting. Um, yes, yeah, so if I was going to do a whole bunch of these, Sandra, I, that's definitely a better option to use like the snowman magic set where you have the dies and you can easily just die cut them. Actually, I would use that uh, bulk method for cutting and uh, stamping die cut image. Um, it's way faster, but um, this is fine for just one offs. So because this scarf is all like straight angles, it's really easy to like cut this out. But there are some people who are very talented at um, fussy cutting and I am in awe because like some of the some of the things that I've seen fussy cut, like they they're very intricate. I don't know how they get into like the tiny corners and like do the cutting without get ending up with like curled edges because that's what I end up with sometimes is that um, I think it has to do with the angle of your scissors. I do know that um, they have recommended that you cut on a 45 degree angle that you hold it sideways slightly so that you don't end up pressing the edges of your of your image upward and get that curled edge but I'm somehow not very good at it and uh, sometimes I end up with those curled edges anyways. So here with the straight edges it's very easy to just kind of nip in and get the uh, the right angle. The scarf is quite easy to cut. There you go. See? All done. So that's good. And then I just need to cut out his hat and then we can assemble him. So Maureen, you're flying in from Newfoundland for on stage. How exciting. I can't believe you're coming. I'm like meeting all these people for the very first time. I don't think, I don't know about you, but I have actually never met Genevieve. Um, Genevieve is my team leader um, in person ever, even though she's been my sister's um, designated um, or favored demonstrator for like umpteen years. Um, I always ordered through her um, for my sister's gifts for many years, but always online, like, you know, by email or, you know, I never actually met her. When I did the pickup, she has like a little pickup bin outside of her house. So I never had to actually knock on the door and meet her in person. And I can't believe that after all these years, I'm finally going to actually meet her in person. And it'll be nice to meet all these other ladies coming from all over Ontario, too. All right, so here's his hat. Let's hope I don't lose that before I glue it in there. Okay, so let's, let's put the little penguin together. The body can go on, the scarf can go on, but and the hat. Actually, yes, I will put that on, too. All right. So, I just need a little bit of glue here. I know many people just kind of scribble on the glue, but I find that I somehow lose control of my glue and then I end up with glue right to the edge or big, big blobs of it and uh, it's not good. So I tend to use um, little dots too so I can maintain control. <laughs> okay, there he is. All right, and then the scarf, because he's the scarf is longer than his neck, I'm just going to make sure that I don't go right to the edge with my dots of glue. There we go. He's so cute. All right. Oh, actually, you know what? With the hat, Maureen says she met, oh, you met Genevieve at 30th anniversary on stage. How long ago was that, Maureen? Like, uh, was that like a few years ago? Um, or has it been a while since you've actually seen her? You know what, I'm going to put it right on the edge of the hat here. I'm going to put little tiny, because there, there's nothing to glue it on behind him. Um, so I'm just going to put little tiny dots of glue right along the edge of the hat. 
Okay. Oh, the year before COVID hit. So it's been like, um, what, three or four years since you've seen her then? Should really do this on the silicone mat. I think it's okay. All right, so let me let him dry off to the side. Um, put this away. All right, so. Oh, I need my green piece too. I also need to stamp that. Okay, so this piece is going to go down to approximately there, and I want to do it along the bottom. Um, let me get this out. So I'm just going to line it up in the corner on the grid in case it moves after I place the stamp for uh, stamping. And I'm going to use the Happiest Holidays stamp. Here we go. Yeah, this is the right one. All right, so I'm going to place this along the bottom. So I'm going to just center it and once I've got it on the plate, I'm just going to double check that it's straight, but it looks looks mostly straight to me here. Oh, and this is a cling stamp, actually. I forgot. So, good thing I lined it up. I'm going to remove this and just take out the extra padding behind because the um, cling stamps don't need that extra piece of padding. It's just the photo photopolymer one needs an extra bit of foam because they're not as high as the cling stamps. So I'm just going to line it up there again. Uh, let's put that here. Okay. Hmm, looks like it's a little too far over. Let's try that again. Sorry, this is my OCD. I don't like it when my my words are crooked. Um, okay, there we go. Oh, so Maureen, you've met her several times. Wow, okay. All right, so I'm just gonna double check. I use the, uh, the grid lines on the plate to see if it's lined up and I think it's actually angled down a little bit I can tell by looking at the it and this is not a straight stamp either so it's not exactly um, easy to line up but you know you just do the best you can I guess but I can tell that this one is on an angle so I'm just gonna lift it up without completely detaching it and reattach it so I think that looks straighter okay ready to go. So let's just do this in the same blue. This is um, Misty Moonlight. Okay. Oops. See? When I when that happens to me, if I didn't do this on the Stamparatus, I would not be able to fix that. But because it's on the Stamparatus, I'm just going to press it down again. Okay, so I didn't put enough ink on that side, so I'm going to have to do it again. Hmm. I could use a little bit more ink on that. Yes, Maureen, I'm, I'm like, Sandra and I are both looking to forward to going to on stage. I think it's going to be a, a lot of fun. And um, I'm happy that we're going to uh, join in for the team dinner afterwards, too. That'll be fun, too. All right. So I think that's looking better. All right. I think that's good. Let's take that off. So Maureen, you must be flying in on Friday, I guess. We are coming in Saturday morning. We will be waking up early and driving in from Ottawa. 
and we'll be staying till Sunday morning. All right. So, okay, so now that my uh, everything is stamped, I'm going to take go back to my piece here, and it's all dried now, and let's get the trimmer out. Okay, so you could use your scissors if you wanted to, because these are just short little strips. You can just easily trim that off. Um, what I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm just thinking if I can line this up. Okay, so I know that the bottom is already straight, right? Because I lined the uh, bottom piece up. And I'm going to, I can see, sorry, I am off the page. I'm off the screen. Um, let me just move these out of the way so I can push this up a little bit. Okay, so um, I can see the white behind here because I left gaps. Okay, so that's the advantage of leaving a slight gap. I can line up the edge of the um, the base of this uh, piece with the track so that I can trim off all the excess easily. So let's just do that. Let's see if I did that right. You could also do it the other way. Um, I prefer to do it this way. Like if you wanted to flip it over and see the other side. I just prefer not having a lip on the uh, the edge of the paper. Okay, so that's one side done, and I will do the same thing. Let's see, I'm going to aim for, let's see what's the best way to do this. Yeah, I could do it this way. Okay, so, oh, let's, I guess I'll have to uh, do it this way, use this side. Oh, am I off the page again? A little bit. Okay, so let me line it up with the track. The middle of the track and I'm going to trim it again. Okay, let's brush that off. <laughs> it's okay, Maureen. Um, like I said, it's no fun talking to myself. I think we are staying at uh, Place Philippe. I think that's the place, or Square Philippe Square. I forget the square Phillips. I don't know. It's more like an apartment style hotel. So it's um, got a kitchen and stuff. So that's kind of cool. Um, there we go. That's the last edge that I just trimmed off. So now you're back to your original cut size. And I'm just going to take my bone folder and press down the edges because I can, there's a tiny bit of an edge, a lip from pressing the, uh, when, when I cut the paper. And uh, I just want to make sure it's flat. Okay, so that's your piece. It looks really good, I think, when you, once it's trimmed down. Okay, so there is my piece, and it goes on top. Yeah, we have a kitchen, Sandra. <laughs> we have like a little kitchen and a table um, in our uh, studio style hotel room. Okay, so that's how it's gonna go. Um, I'm going to put some stamp and seal on that. Am I keeping the tiny scraps? Are you kidding, Sandra? <laughs> um, no, I don't think I'll keep those. <laughs> that's, that's beyond me to try and make use of such tiny scraps. I, I don't feel the compulsion to keep those ones. I feel okay throwing those out. Um, okay, so just centering this above my stamped piece, my st stamped sentiment. Okay. Doesn't that look great? I like, I really like how that turned out. Um, okay, so here's my, oh, I need my, uh, my little penguin on top of the circle okay um i think some people might want to pop it up i just left it flat you could pop it up if you want to um i'm gonna glue him on top of this like that so let's uh where did my glue go here we go all right so i'm just gonna check 
his whole body fits in here before I put glue on everything. Okay. Thank you, Maureen. Yeah, like I was saying at the beginning, I just have so much um, of this DSP left over from Celebration last year, and I have all these scraps that I didn't use, so this is a great, this technique is really, really great for using up scraps. Okay, so let's just stick this guy on. Okay, here's my card base. All right, so you could pop this up. Um, you know what, maybe I will pop it up this time. Okay, so I did pop up this one. This one I did put on dimensionals, so I'm gonna take the dimensionals to uh, pop that up. Yeah, absolutely, Sandra. You could do that with the Happy Forest Friends, absolutely. Okay, so, oh, we're going to use the edge. You know what? So if you guys don't uh, have been throwing away these pieces, don't throw them away. They come in really handy. I just rip them off, and I use them for longer pieces that I'm popping up. So use all of your dimensionals. Don't waste any of it. edges from another sheet too. See this one? This is also just the edges left. And I'm just going to rip them off. Oops. Oops. See, nobody can see behind your card this mat, so it's okay to be messy with this. Do you think I've covered enough? All right, I think that's enough. I'm gonna take off all the backing. Oops, don't quite have the edge of that one. And I also toyed with the idea of placing not a solid white um, circle behind it, but using vellum. And uh, I didn't want to do that live this morning. I was going to maybe try it out when I'm not live. Because if I'm not happy with it, then I don't have to uh, switch out. Okay, so there's all the dimensionals on there. And I'm going to put it on the upper half of my card. And I'm going to cover up that seam in the embossing. And nobody will notice it because it's white and it's harder to see. So, there you go. And then I can pop this guy up as well. Oops. All right over. Okay, so I'm just going to center him. Oops. There we go. So that's my card. I thought about putting rhinestones on or something, but um, I think I'm happy with it being the way it is. I'm glad, I'm happy with that. And then I'll probably, you know, stamp something, maybe choose like, um, and a Happy New Year. I'll probably put that on the inside, but that's very simple and easy to add. Um, and that's it for this card for this week. Thank you ladies for joining me and uh, for uh, commenting. Um, I love having you guys here because like I said, it's no fun talking to myself. I like having you guys here. Thanks again for joining in and have a fantastic weekend. Bye.